Are you looking for a four channel car audio amplifier that's relatively compact, powerful, and efficient? Well, today we're gonna to take a look at this Down For Sound JP284. It's their newest four channel amplifier as of December 2023. So let's open the box up, take a closer look at what's inside. Included therein is the JP284 owner's manual, which has specifications, features, shows you how to wire the amp, and there's some additional things at the very end which we will get to later in the video. Of course, Alan throws in a couple of his finest keys to his Porsche 911 Turbo. This is not a Mickey Mouse program! And here is the amp, the JP284 in this really cool white anodized finish, which kind of silvery white. The Down for Sound logo there, laser etched, as well as the JP284 laser etched onto the amp. Now these amps are available in eight different colors. So choose whichever one fits into your system best. That's pretty cool. And the price as of this video, $379.99, you can check a link in the video description to find out what the current price is. Could be more, could be less. Now let's take a closer look at the amp to find out the settings, etc. Here on one side of the amp, you can see the Tiffany style RCAs for your four channel input. Those are here on the left side. Then we have the channel settings for the individual one and two and three and four channels. The one and two are across the top, three and four are on the bottom. And we're gonna go over one set of them because they're both the same pretty much. So at the top we have the gain, 0.2 to six volts. We also have the high pass filter, which is variable from 20 Hertz to 800 Hertz. Or if we enable this times 10 factor, 200 Hertz to eight kilohertz. Just to the right of the times 10 is the on off for the high pass filter. So it can be enabled or disabled via this switch. On the right side, we have the low pass filter settings as well as times 10 and off on functions. Now the gain controls on this amps are continuously variable which means they just turn with no clicks. However, the high pass and low pass settings have these potentiometers with 41 individual clicks for exact adjustments. There's a chart in the back of the manual which tells you what each of these clicks kind of translate to. Although this is more work, it is more precise to give you the exact crossover setting, plus it's kind of retro, it reminds you of changing channels on an old TV. Also having high pass and low pass filters with times 10 means you can set band pass filters on this amp if you'd like. On the opposite end, we have the power connections as well as the speaker connections and a few LED lights. First up, the 1.0 power inputs. Yes, these accept oversize 1.0 power wire. Also we have power protect and clip LEDs. Also we have the speaker outputs are via the stair step style connections with channels one and two being on the top channels three and four being on the bottom, you have to make sure with this amp you hook up channels three and four first, otherwise you won't be able to access the terminals for bridging channel one positive, channel two negative, channel three positive, channel four negative. As far as dimensions go, 13.4 inches for the length, 7.5 inches for the width, 2.2 inches for the height, millimeter equivalents are there as well. Here we have a comparison of the JP84, 234 and 284, to give you an idea of the difference in sizes between the three amps. Now this JP284 is rated as follows, 284 times four at four ohms, 460 times four at two ohms, or 888 watts times two bridged at four ohms. Here's an interesting comparison for old school guys. Two Hyphonics Zeus amplifiers from 1990 is pretty much the same power as this one amp. Another comparison is the Orion Beast. That's right, this amp has the power of two Orion Beast. Now I know it is Class D versus Class AB, but still we're just talking about power output. Speaking of power output, we're going to check out this JP284 here on the amp dyno on the left. You'll see the power output in watts. In the middle, the ohm load on the right, the voltage of the dyno will also have the remote clamp so that we can calculate the amplifier's efficiency. Hold on to your butts. First up, we'll do four ohms, four channel test, two channels tested, all loaded. We do have this matched up to the amp dyno with 10 dB of overlap using DD1+. Using the one kilohertz track, we're gonna start with certified test, which takes us up to 1% distortion. The amplifier is rated 284 by four. 
And we get that easily around 350 watts average times four, right at 14.4. What about uncertified takes us up to the clipping point. Let's see what we get here. Very close to the same, about 350 watts average times four, rated 284 by four. Here dynamically, we get a little bit more power. Our voltage is a little bit stronger because of the lithium bank, but we're closer to around 385 watts average times four. Now the efficiency we measured at four ohms, four channel, 93%, superb. Next up, we'll try two ohms, four channel mode. Again, four channel test, two tests at all loaded. Here channels one through four shown on the amplifier. One kilohertz test track. Amplifier is rated 460 watts times four. What can we get to 1% distortion at one kilohertz? Yeah, about 560 watts average. So about 100 watts over the rated power. Now, if you notice, there is a little difference between the two channels. It is not a big difference. It's less than one dB. You'd never be able to hear that. So just so you know that. 561, 509, virtually the same there up to clipping, but look at dynamic. We're well up into the upper 600s, right around 700 watts per channel dynamically at one kilohertz. How's that efficiency go? Still very good, 86% at two ohms four channel mode. Now we're gonna bridge four channels down to two, find out how much power this amp makes as a two channel amp. Again, channel one positive, two negative, three positive, four negative, bridges the channels. Here we go, one kilohertz, rated 888 watts by two, and we get <laughs> about 1,050 by two at 14.2, so well above the rating. This is a very powerful amp. Again, it's about the same power as two of those old school amps I was talking about earlier. Uncertified to clipping 1,089, 1,021, about 1,050 average, very good. Dynamically, look at this. We're up to around 1,200 watts. <laughs> yep, a little bit over 1,200. 1,222, 1,212 at 14 and a half volts. Now the efficiency dropped a little bit, but we're still very close to 80% at 79%. Here are all the results that we just showed pretty much in the test. If you wanna pause this and see it, you can also see the efficiency for each test, it did well above the rated power in every single test. Also bridging the amplifier, you can use this as a four, three or two channel amp. So very flexible overall. Now, before we get to the internals, we're gonna hook it up to some speakers in the three channel mode, two going to bookshelves, one going to subwoofers. See how it sounds, here we go. talk a lot about sound quality because it is subjective but to my ears this amp sounded great with the bookshelf speakers and had plenty of bump on the subwoofer side so overall I really enjoyed listening to it. The JP284 is like all the other JP amps that have the acrylic bottom plate. It's pretty thick plexi so we'll take out the six screws and take that off so we can take a closer look at the internals. Again comparison here to the JP84234 and 284, you can see the 284 does have the dual transformers, is a little bit longer in size. As expected, we'll have a little bit beefier guts here than the other models because it is more powerful. Again, the dual transformers, and we do have more of the filter caps here. 
These are 2200 microfarad 35 volt SAX branded. And on the rails, we have 2200 microfarad 80 volt. Those are the Capson branded. Both are kind of generic, not your father's niche cons, but they work here just fine. Now let's talk about the pros and cons, things I like, things that could be better, at least things to be aware of. Relatively small footprint, rated power plus, the crossover features, low pass, high pass with times 10, as well as the clicking 41 click potentiometers, eight color choices that stay cool during the test, and the excellent efficiency. Things to consider, there are no RCA outputs, no remote base control. The gain controls are continuously variable. They do not have the clicks. Also, no two-channel input option. You will have to use all four RCAs. Also, 180 amp fuse required for this amp. As should be expected with a more than 2,000 watt four-channel amp. Full disclosure, this video is shown as a sponsor video because Down for Sound paid a slot fee to have the amplifier shown. However, all the thoughts expressed in the video are mine, as well as the factual test shown from the amp dyno. YouTube requires this to be shown as a sponsored video, even though it is a true review. I do appreciate you guys watching as always. Make sure you smash that thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and stick around because we will have more interesting tests coming up very soon. Till next time, Big D, I'm out of here. We have the JP284 bridge. We're gonna try 40 Hertz to see what it does. Four ohms at 40 Hertz. Can it do the 888 times two? And yes, we get about 945 Watts average at 14.1. Big D, out.